Hello, welcome to Breakfast All Day. That's Christy, and Alonzo and Matt are here too. Uh, <laughs> next up is Gunda, a experimental documentary type film, uh, executive produced by Joaquin Phoenix. Christy, will you tell us about it? I will. Gunda is a movie that makes me wish I had seen it in the theater because it is exquisitely beautiful. It's an, shot in incredibly gorgeous, like textural, grainy black and white. Um, and it's so intimate and it made me wonder over and over again, how did they get that shot? What kind of patience did it take for them to get that shot? Um, it is an hour and a half long. It's about a pig, a mama pig and her piglet. It's about a couple of chickens and a bunch of cows. And we watched them all just exist. And there's no narration and there's no explaining anything and there's no music and there are no titles you just watch these animals and um, it's mesmerizing. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's unmistakable as to what is happening from one moment to the next. It's not just like random imagery. I mean, the director is a long time um, veteran documentarian named Victor Kosakowski, and um, he will just hold a shot and you can totally follow what is happening in the life of these animals. And it begins with this mama pig and her, her 12 little piglets who are just so freaking adorable. I can't stand it. They're so sweet and cuddly. And he'll just hold a shot of him, of, of the mom just laying there and the baby's all suckling away. Or he'll show a chicken emerging from like a little coop. And there's like a one-legged chicken hopping around and you just watch how the chicken exists in the world. And then there are cows and they are let out into a field and they are grazing and just hanging out. And by the end, it is very clearly and very starkly um, and a message of, of veganism and of you know what, what animal cruelty is all about. And um, the idea that you know animals have rich interior lives and souls in ways that perhaps people don't consider when they are choosing what they eat. I am not a vegan, but Joaquin Phoenix is, and Joaquin Phoenix is an executive producer on this. He had seen it and um, signed on to lend his name and his, his clout and his voice to it. And um, he'll, it's long, long takes that suck you into what is happening and the absolute ending of it when I was watching it, I'm like, did wait did that just happen like do what did what i think happened just now just happen it's not gory i'm not i don't want anything it's, no, it's no, gross no, no. it's not but it's, it's very it's, subtle it's it's very subtle you gotta pay attention and then he'll just, he just holds that shot for a long long time and it is very sad and very hard to watch and yet mesmerizing and hypnotic um so i really loved it but it is definitely not everyone's cup of tea I, I liked it fine. I think it, it does what it sets out to do. But, uh, you know, uh, the the sort of silent documentary has been a thing for a while now. And I feel like I've seen ones that are better, like um, Our Daily Bread or Sweetgrass or uh, Leviathan, not the not the narrative Leviathan, the other Leviathan. Um, and so compared to those movies, I was like, well, this is fine. This is nice. I see what they're doing. But it's you know, it, it is, and it is by its intent, much more smaller scale and much more intimate. And that's like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm damning with faint, faint praise. It's a good movie. It's, it, it is powerfully put together. I just feel like I've seen other films that use the same uh, structure and uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, di directorial style to greater effect. Matt? Yeah. Matt likes meat. Matt says, fuck those oh, and, 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 I, <laughs> I, and I'm still, I'm not going to quit eating bacon. Um, <laughs> this movie's beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. uh, this is some of the finest cinematography I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that it could not have been more pretentious. Okay. Uh, it, 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 so, you know, let's be clear. They've clearly set up dollies in the pen with the piglets because sure. there's absolutely dolly shots. Uh, and this is more my problem than anything else. Like I kept seeing the one-legged chicken and I kept thinking of that joke, like, man, the chicken that good, you don't eat all at once. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, I thought it was interesting, but it really like, it, 
it lingers, I think, in a lot of places with some of the stuff it's doing too much, right? And and what it's doing with the cows, you know, I, I like the way that was done. I actually think the stuff with the cows actually is probably a little bit more effective than anything else. Um, and the way the ending goes down, uh, it feels exploitive. Um, How so? Well, in that, okay. like, well, I don't, I mean, I don't want to give anything away, sure. but like, well, uh, the, define what you mean by pretentious, because I, I I think I know what you mean, having seen the film, but that's a word that gets bandied around when people are just it, talking about something they think is too, you know, it's, already, it's exactly. So, I mean, do you think this film is up its own ass? Do you think that it's that it's leaning too hard into messaging as opposed to so just capturing I, a thing or what? So I think it's so first of all, I think most of the stuff with the chicken, with the various chickens is too much up its own ass. Right. Because okay. half the <laughs> because half the chickens are missing a lot of feathers and there's there's no context like the other two pieces that the movie focuses on with the pigs and with the cows you get what's going on right absolutely but with the chickens it's it, it felt like just merely beautiful photography and nothing else and it just felt like it didn't it actually took away from it because it's like well well what's going on like i came away with more questions than answers about that and like well why are we paying attention to this like i could see the way the cows group together and keep the flies off of each other and the way that they're prancing around being let out in the meadows and like oh look they're having fun and 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 feel that there's a soul there at best the chickens are like this made me start thinking like wonder if velociraptors had feathers huh. like right i i didn't get it. and what chickens are supposed to be the smart ones I, hmm. I didn't get any sense of of soul and emotion and kind of connection with all of the time that he spends with the chickens as i did with any anything else right and then the stuff with the pigs felt both overdone in places and then really exploitive at the end. And so, you know, for a hour and a half movie that is about like the evils of eating meat and, and what we're doing to these animals that have souls, like, well, one group of them, you haven't really shown me that. And the second one is like, well, if you're that serious, you'd have done something else at the ending. But that's, you know, so I, I like, it gets a lot of points for being beautifully shot, but I think that other things that have, have have tackled this subject have done it much better than this movie has like this movie feels like an hour and a half long guilt trip yeah right and it's it, it definitely falls in the category and this isn't necessarily a bad thing but uh, you know you know that the director had a thing in mind before the film even started sure. rolling like there are some documentarians that kind of come into a subject or an event and maybe like they they have one thing in mind when they start but then over the course of making that realize oh wait no there's this, there are these other angles to explore the things mm -hmm. to consider that i hadn't thought about this guy clearly is like i'm going to show you farm animals in this specific way for a specific reason and i'm going to ride it out to the end and I, I hear what you're saying, Matt. I don't know that I would call the ending exploitative, but it's it's not irresponsible. There's a word here that I want that it's that it, yeah, I see what you're saying that they they present a thing and and no one prevents a thing. Maybe it's right. A problem. I don't know. Right. Is it the filmmaker's role to step all, in and try so to prevent a thing from happening? No, That's no. not his job um also, he also well, but if you're but i would argue if you're making a movie that you are trying to prevent the thing from happening and you're making people people like to me put your money where your mouth is like step up and do something about it and show an alternative well maybe he feels like this is this is his way of of prompting people to make different choices right i'm gonna play it out and let you see how it happens right and then you can decide for yourself whether you're okay with that Maybe that's his thinking. Um, I read an interview in the LA Times um, that Joaquin Phoenix and the director did with, with our friend Mark Olson. And they say that this is not vegan propaganda. 
but th- it is advocacy, certainly. I mean, it is, it is definitely, as you say, it had a perspective from the very beginning, like Food Inc. does. Sure. No, no. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's not propaganda in that, um, you know, it, 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 they're not showing you, they, they, they have, I don't know they've necessarily manipulated events. Certainly everything that we see in this movie, that's how it plays out with the exception of the dollies in the barn. That's a valid point. It's so gorgeous. The way the light hits the mama pig's ears, like streaking through the barn. Uh, and it's in black and white. We, have, uh, we haven't mentioned that. I think right. I did. No, oh, I oh, agree that it's gorgeous. I just like, I have an ethical issue with it. And the more I think about it, the more I'm actually taking points away in my head. Because Do it. Take your points okay. away. It's, Change your number. It, yeah, <laughs> because the more I think about it, like, it's if, like the old, Sam Kinnison, the, the old Sam Kinison thing about the people making the TV commercials about the starving people. It's like, don't give them that sandwich. This is sand. <laughs> no, but it's right. It's the like, it's the film. Like, I don't think that the filmmaker manipulates the situation, but it's manipulative towards the, and granted, yes, filmmakers manipulate an audience. That's the job. Mm-hmm. But it just feels like, you could also act locally. Like if you're going to do the thing, if like if you're going to make your point and be like, look, these animals have souls and they're, and they feel things and they have emotions, then fucking step up. Huh. Right. And, and rather than just like, Oh, I'm going to cover this tragedy and not do a fucking thing about it. Like maybe he is, maybe he does. Who knows? He also is the DP and he also um, edited it. Co co DP co editor, Victor Kosakowski. And he co-wrote it anyway. Um, I though I much prefer this and this the ambition of the experimentalism to something really pat and cutesy like the anthropomorphism that we see in the annual Disney Nature documentaries <laughs> where they where they give they give the little monkeys names names and, names and backstories and like oh look here's a birthday party that they stumbled into <laughs> to throw cake at each other and pop balloons like I'd rather have the challenging starkness and potential pretension as Matt puts it, um, then you know, I, think, I, I, I admire the daring of it and the artistry of it. If these are the choices, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, like, if you've never seen Our Daily Bread, uh, and, and it's, there is a Blu-ray of it now, I highly recommend it. It is about the whole, all the, the, the vast array of the food chain. Uh, and it is a silent documentary, but very powerful and, and beautifully made. Okay, Matt, so since you're changing your number, what's your number now? Uh, four. Okay. All right. So I said eight. I said seven just for craft. Like I, I have issues with this film, but I mean, it is unmistakably beautifully made. Um, but, you know, I, I think Matt is not wrong when he brings up the ethical quandaries of the film. Yes. So our number is now a 6.3. Gunda had a quick um, awards qualifying run. Yes. Last year, it did not get nominated for an Oscar. It is so much better than like My Octopus Teacher, for example. <laughs> did you so guys see My I, Octopus Teacher? I got, that's the one I have to catch up with. I finally saw Time, which it took me forever to get to and it's wonderful. Time is very beautiful. Also in beautiful black and white. Um, anyway, so uh, 6.3 is our number. Gundo's out there streaming, in, it's from Neon. So. Uh, no, it is not streaming. It is, is it in not? select select theaters. Oh, interesting. It's at the Landmark here in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, it is, it is, yeah, just in theaters for now. It will be streaming soonish, I imagine. Okay. So thanks for watching, everybody. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us at BeFast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And hey, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash day. We are talking about uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is going to be wrapping up pretty soon. And uh, next time also, uh, right in, in, just in time for the Oscars, our subscribers have chosen a Best Picture winner that none of us have seen to go back and review. So we'll be talking about Elia Kazan's Gentleman's Agreement, starring Gregory Peck and Celeste Holm. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.